Hello and welcome to another vlog. Today we are making soap. I'm finally there. I'm finally ready. Now this is not traditional lye based soap. This is melt and pour soap that we're going to do today. I like doing melt and pour because it's easy like the soap part, part is already made for you. This is a clear soap base that I got from Earthwise Aromatics. And we're gonna be using this to make lavender soap today, which lavender is my favorite scent. I've got all of my supplies over here ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut up our base. So I'm gonna take out a clean cutting board that I can cut this soap on. And you wanna cut this up into smaller pieces so that it melts evenly. This soap base is made out of vegetable glycerin, coconut oil, palm oil, sugar, castor oil, vegetable oil, and stearic acid. So it is a vegetable-based soap. Now the reason why there is sugar in this soap is to help with foaming. It adds, it creates more lather when you put sugar in it. So just a little tidbit. Now I only wanna make one pound of soap today, so I'm going to sorta cut this in half. Ugh! Or what looks like close enough to half to me. I don't care about being too precise here. And I'm gonna set half of that aside and we're gonna cut up this chunk. All right, so sometimes you can buy soap that comes already like perforated in these little squares. And I really prefer that to these big chunks, but right now this is what I've got to work with. So this is what we're gonna use. So I'm just gonna start by cutting it like that and then just further cut these down into four. So there are many different ways that you can do melt and pour soap. How we're doing it today is just the way I like to do it. I started making soap um, when I was about 16 years old with my mom. Um, melt and pour soap, like we're doing today. And uh, this is the way I've always done it, although I am gonna try a new technique today. And we are gonna use natural mica powder to color our soap which is not something I've ever done before, so I hope it turns out okay. But since this soap is just for personal use, I don't mind experimenting with it and trying out new things. I don't care. My soap doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It will be usable no matter what. You could use it just like this. But we're gonna melt it down and we're gonna add lavender essential oil, lavender flowers, and some purple coloring. Now usually I will add some vitamin E oil to my soap just to make it a little bit nicer on the skin, but I don't have any today so we're not going to add it. You can also add carrier oils like sweet almond or avocado or something like that. Am I doing these in uniform pieces? I hope so. I feel like I'm making some bigger than the others. It's close enough and the reason why you do this is because if you just, ha if you just tried to melt one big block of soap, um, some parts of the soap would melt while others were still solid and then some of it would start to scorch and it just wouldn't melt evenly. You never want your soap to get above 160 degrees Fahrenheit if you can help it. I never use a thermometer, I just use my eye. But you can use a thermometer if you're unsure. Also, there are different types of melt and pour bases. You can get like shea butter base, goat milk, buttermilk. You can get a solid white instead of clear. Um, there are lots of different bases you can buy. And I like to work with clear when I'm trying out new color. But I also like to use uh, goat's milk. So I have ordered some goat's milk base. I'm just trying to see if my pieces are uniform. I've ordered some goat milk, goat's milk base that I'm gonna use to make a different kind of soap, but today we're doing clear. And if you are interested in making soap, but it feels overwhelming to you, I would recommend starting with melt and pour, like I'm showing you today. It's really easy, it's hard to mess it up. You basically just melt your soap base, add your additives in, and then pour it into a mold. It's easy and it's fun to make your own soap that way. And you can choose, like I said, from a wide variety of different soap bases, just depending on your needs for your skin. You can find soap making supplies at stores like Hobby Lobby, or if you want to order them online, there's a company I would recommend called Brambleberry that actually one of my viewers recommended to me and I have ordered some soap making supplies from them. I haven't received them yet 
This stuff that I'm using today I got off Amazon, but as part of my New Year's resolution I am no longer ordering from Amazon. But if you do, I will link down below to what I purchased from there. Um, I got, like I said, I got this soap base from Earthwise Aromatics, but they only sell through Amazon. And then I also got my molds and my mica powder from there as well. But Brambleberry sells all that stuff at very good prices and they are a small company that specializes in soap making, so I would always recommend them first. No, I am not affiliated with them in any way. I just always feel like I need to do a disclosure when I'm on YouTube that I'm not getting paid by these companies. This is just, I'm just sharing with you what I'm using. Okay, so now we're gonna put our soap chunks into our pan so we can melt them. So I am using an enamel pan. Um, I actually prefer to use a glass pan, but I don't currently have one that's big enough. Having a pan with a spout on it too is very helpful, but I also don't have that, so we're gonna get a little messy. It's best to use a non-metal pan for anything that you're gonna be using herbs in, in my opinion, but if you have a stainless steel pan, that'll work uh, really nicely for soap as well because you're not really like infusing herbs into this or anything, you're just mixing them in. So really anything that you can melt your soap in is gonna be all right. Now you can also melt your soap in the microwave in a heat safe container like a glass measuring cup. If you wanna do that, you just put these chunks into the microwave safe dish and microwave it for 30 seconds, stir, microwave it for another 30 seconds, stir, and keep going for about two to two and a half minutes until it's nice and melted. And again, you might want to use a thermometer. If you're new, don't let it get over 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I prefer to make mine on the stove. You can also make it in a double boiler. If you just make it in a pan like this, you need to keep your heat very, very low and stir it consistently. Before we melt our soap though, we need to have all of our other ingredients ready to go because once the soap is melted, we're gonna quickly mix everything and pour it into molds before it starts to cool. We're gonna start by mixing up our color. So right here, I have a light purple mica powder. Mica powder is just ground up minerals and it comes in a variety of different colors. It is all natural and safe. Uh, this is skin safe. I think there are some types out there that maybe you can't use on certain parts of your body, so make sure if you use it, you read what you're using. So when you use a powder colorant like this in your soap, apparently you can't just dump it right in there because it won't mix in very well. You need to pre-mix it with a liquid, and the best liquid to do that with is uh, rubbing alcohol. Look how pretty that is. That is gonna make a gorgeous soap, I think. I hope, I hope. So I'm gonna mix in about a half teaspoon. You don't have to be exact, but about a half teaspoon with about a teaspoon of this rubbing alcohol. And I'm just gonna get in there and mix it in the best I can. It looks gorgeous. And then if I feel like I need a little bit more, I'm just gonna squirt a little bit more in there. Oops. There we go. Okay, that looks really pretty. So once our soap is melted, we're gonna mix that in. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside for now. Hopefully that's enough color. Like I said, this is the first time I'm using this stuff, so I'm experimenting here. Worst case scenario is that our soap is very lightly colored, and I'm okay with that. And the next time I'll know to add more, but we'll see how this goes. Now for your essential oil, I am using 100% pure lavender essential oil. And of course you can mix and match and use different essential oils or use more than one, but you just wanna to stick to about 0.4 ounces to half an ounce of essential oil per pound of soap. That is the ratio that I try to use. The best way to measure this is to use a dropper or a pipette that you know exactly how much it holds. I don't have one of those right now. I just have this oil in a reducer bottle so y'all, I'm just gonna eyeball it based on experience, okay? But if you're new to making soap, um, you can measure it out with a uh, dropper or you can just like literally weigh it out. One ounce is 30 milliliters. So I would say about 10 to 15 milliliters 
for a pound of soap depending on how strong you want it to be. You can always adjust up or down. There are fragrance oils that you can get and use too. Companies like Brambleberry sell different fragrance oils. Personally, I like to only use 100% pure essential oils, but you can obviously use any fragrance oil that you like. Um, with fragrance oil, there might be a different ratio, so make sure you read the instructions if you get one of those of how much you should use. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat on to a very, very low. And like I said, you can do this on a double boiler too. And then I'm just gonna stir this with a wooden spoon until it's evenly melted. And you want to basically be stirring it constantly so that it doesn't start to scorch and everything just melts kind of at the same rate. It's already starting to melt on the bottom. It melts very quickly. And this is on the lowest that my stove can go. I would also recommend if you're gonna make your own soap that you have separate pans and spoons. Oh crap, I just knocked something out. Separate pans and spoons that you only use for soap making. Um, or I use the, these for all of my homemade cosmetics and stuff um, and that you don't use it with food that's just my recommendation I'm sure you could clean it enough that you could still use it with food especially if you don't you know you're not in a position to have extra pots and pans but if you can have a separate set I would recommend it because then you don't have to worry about contaminating your food with like essential oils and stuff all right it's already starting to melt down pretty good and it's only been a couple minutes and the soap will get built up on your spoon, but you can just scrape it off. It's no big deal. Someday I'd really like to get into making soap completely from scratch with lye, but this is just how I learned how to do it for my mom. And so this is what I've always done and I've never really <laughs> gone any further than melt and pour. And but even with melt and pour though, there are a lot of really cool techniques. You can do things like swirling and layering and stuff. Um, and I plan to do some of those in future vlogs. Today I'm just making some basic soap that I can use in the shower. I want to make some facial soap too, which I'll probably make out of a shea butter. Or, or you could even add shea butter to a base like this. There's like so many different things you can do with this soap. It's really fun. It's a really fun hobby to get into. And you can start very, very super basic. You can start just with a melt and pour base, some coloring, and you don't have to use the mica powder coloring either. I've always used color blocks, which are like these blocks of solid color that you just shave some off into your soap. Um, that's what I've always used, but I, I bought the mica powder because I'm gonna be using it to make lip gloss. So I thought I would try it in soap since it is safe to use in soap. Just see how it turns out. But I believe Brambleberry sells color blocks if you think those would be easier to use. They, well, they are easier to use actually. Um, yeah, so you can get some of those and they're not very expensive either. And you just shave a little bit off into your soap until you like the color. And you can mix colors together. You can do all kinds of stuff. Okay, our soap is just about melted here. We're getting close. So you can see here how it's, it's pretty much melted. I'm gonna turn the heat off completely and just let the temperature of it continue to melt that soap. All right y'all, so I think my soap is pretty much melted. There's no more chunks in here. I've turned the heat off and it's like all completely liquid. You can tell if you've raised the temperature too high or if you've over melted it, if your soap starts to turn like a yellow color and smell really bad. But I think we got it just about right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the coloring in and let's see how this turns out. I'm a little nervous about this, but we're gonna try it. Look how pretty that is. And I hope this is enough color. So let's just stir it in. Wow. <laughs> That's really pretty. I don't think I've ever had soap that pretty before. My goodness. Okay, and I like to hurry and mix everything up before the soap starts to cool because we need to get it into the mold. All right, so that's the color and I think that was plenty of color. Wow, wow. I hope there's not too much shadow and you can kind of see how pretty that is. Then I'm gonna add in the fragrance. 
which like I said I'm just winging it based on experience but you want like 0.4 to two half an ounce 0.4 to 0.5 ounces of essential oil and I will just smell it and see if it smells strong enough for me and that smells pretty good and you can if you're just if you're like me you can just wing it too just pour some in there and smell it and see how you like it now real quick we're gonna prepare our molds here I probably should have done this already but I'm gonna take some lavender flowers that I have in this jar and I'm gonna sprinkle them in the molds now you can also do a layering technique um, if you want but because this is just my personal soap um, I don't really care if the flowers like rise to the top or rise to the bottom but if you want to make sure that they're really suspended in the center you can put a layer of soap down then wait about 10 to 20 minutes for it to dry a little bit sprinkle some lavender on and put another layer of melted soap on that's in my opinion a little bit much for my personal use so I just put it directly into the mold and pour the soap on top of it and I think it ends up looking really pretty. This is Cindy from the future. Somehow I wasn't recording when I actually poured the soap into the molds. It made four bars and I just poured it in. This is what it looks like after I got it poured in. So sorry about that. Um, one pound made about four of these 3.5 ounce bars. So what I do now is we're gonna wait about three hours before we try to take our soap out of the mold. Um, usually two to three hours is good. If I have the time, I'll just let it sit overnight before I try to take it out of the mold. Um, Cause you wanna make sure it's completely set before you try to pop it out of there. When I clean up, what I will do is go ahead and fill this soap pan up with warm water immediately um, so we can start getting the soap out of it. My dogs are ready for dinner. Hold on, pups. I'm just gonna spray this down with warm water and let it sit here for a while until I feel like washing it. Oh, and another tip, when you get ready to pour your soap into your mold, make sure your mold is placed where you plan to leave it because um, you don't want to move it after you've poured liquid soap in there. You want it just to stay where it is until you're ready to take the soap out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I make melt and pour, just a basic, simple melt and pour soap with essential oil color and herbs. I'm gonna make Andrew some kind of cedar, like cedar orange soap once he's used up his current body wash. And I may try a color block on that one instead of the mica powder, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the mica powder yet. We're gonna have to see how these blocks turn out. I am no like professional soap maker or anything. This is just how I do it to make soap for myself to use. I'm not trying to be like, you know, some kind of pro or anything. Just sharing my tips and showing you how easy it can be to really to make your own soap. There's not that much to it. And this stuff, if you get a good base, it is it makes your skin feel really nice, especially if you use a good uh, skin friendly essential oil like lavender. Some other kinds that I like to make, I like to make an orange soap or like an orange lemon soap. That is really invigorating in the morning. Peppermint soap is really nice and I also like to make like a cedar, uh, cedar fur soap, which is really nice for guys. Sandalwood is really nice. Um, rose but I can't afford rose essential oil right now because it's super super expensive but you can always use fragrance oil if you want to do, do something that where the essential oil is like really expensive you could use a good quality fragrance oil and here I've got my notes so when I make a new recipe or I'm trying out something new like with the mica powder I like to kind of take notes of how I did it and put anything on there that I need to remember so if you want more like written out instructions, I'm gonna put a post on my blog either today or tomorrow um, about making melt and pour soap with the mica powder, how I did it in this video. So if you wanna check that out and you can see like links to where you can get everything and like step-by-step -step instructions, I'm gonna do that there. And also just for my future reference too. So I'm gonna, this is probably gonna be one of the first things that I'm gonna put in my new herb journal that Andrew got me for Christmas. Um, is my lavender soap recipe but it's I mean the way I'm gonna do it on my website though is I'm gonna put just like basic melt and pour soap instructions with the basic ratios that you need 
that way it's really easy to see at a glance how to do it based on what scents and additives and stuff that you want to use so you can use any base you can use any fragrance you can use any color and it'll just it'll just tell you like the ratios to use and you can experiment and make all kinds of different cool creations on your own um, and that's also what I'm gonna use <laughs> for my own reference so I thought why not share it if anybody's interested if you're not that's okay too you may know how you may know more about this than I do this is just based on my mediocre experience of making melt and pour soap throughout the years now Brambleberry has some really cool like project kits that I want to get and try and some of those make like 10 bars of soap each um so I might make some or like give some away or sell some um, if they turn out really nicely but the, I would definitely want to do some of those like project kits in the future because I think that'd be a good way to learn new techniques that I haven't used before and um, because honestly I just make the most basic soap I don't really care <laughs> if it looks like it belongs on Pinterest because I'm just using it for myself you know I've never like showed it to anybody before um but hey why not get artsy fartsy with it huh y'all update on my favorite Christmas gift okay except for the Care Bear but my favorite practical Christmas gift is this mug warmer that Andrew got for me. I have been using the hell out of this thing. I've been drinking the same cup of coffee for like two hours. It's awesome. It's been like two hours and this is what our soap looks like so far, y'all. It's looking so pretty. Look at that beautiful bar. I think I really like the mica powder. I was, I was a little worried about it at first because when you mix it up, it looks so shimmery. But now that I'm looking at the partially dried bars, I actually really like how it looks. But we'll have to wait until we get it out to make the final determination. So I also have to thank my viewer who bought me a coffee since last time. Thank you so much, Kiki. I really appreciate that. Your comment was so nice and I appreciate your uh, donation very much. And if any of you out there would like to support the channel and buy me a coffee, it's a donation of $2 or more. You can find the link down below in the description box. Thank you very much. It is, of course, not required, but very much appreciated. And now I've still got this mess to clean up that I just left sitting here while I went and screwed around for two hours. So let's clean it. I'm gonna start by putting my things away down in the cabinet that needs to go back. So this soap, I'm just gonna leave it open like this in half a, in half a thing of plastic. It doesn't really need to be sealed up or anything. So I'm just gonna sit it back down in there. Okay, I've got another mold down here as well, uh, but I didn't make that much soap. You can get all different kinds of molds. I like these standard square molds, but you can get round molds and different shapes. And you can get all kinds of cool stuff. And then I'm gonna put my essential oil back over here with my other oils. So the mica powder I'm putting back in this so this is all my different colored mica powders that I have for making various cosmetics. Look at those colors, y'all. Um, you can get mica powders from Brambleberry, but I got these off Amazon. I'll link it down below. This is a kit of 30 colors. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to use some of these for lip gloss, but it's gonna be a little while before we get to lip gloss making because I ordered most of the supplies from Mountain Rose Herbs, and right now they are so behind on shipping that my order is not even going to ship out for 16 to 20 days. So it's gonna be like a month before I get that stuff. But to me, it's worth waiting for because I would much rather support a really good responsible company instead of just buying everything on Amazon and having it delivered in two days like I used to do. So I feel good about my decision. It sucks to have to wait, but I feel like I really wanna get out of that whole instant gratification mindset and learn how to be patient and wait for things again. The way things are, everybody's just so used to getting everything instantly and I don't think that's necessarily healthy. Like we need to learn how to be patient for things and wait for things. It just makes things more meaningful to me. That's how I feel about it. That might not be the, the truth for everyone, but that's how I feel. But anyway, I do have these that I got off Amazon and I'm going to use them obviously. Um, they are so pretty. They're all shimmery colors. The ruby red is the one I think I want to use for my first lip gloss that I try. I don't know. It might be a bit much. Maybe I should try pink. I don't know. I don't know. There's also a starry red. Oh, well, we'll decide together. Maybe I'll let you guys vote on it. I'll put like three colors up and let you guys vote. So you can choose. All right, so I'm gonna put these back under the cabinet. All right, and then I have my lavender flowers, which are going up here on this shelf, 
with my rosemary. Someday soon we're gonna have this whole shelf on the wall filled with different herbs that we're gonna use for various things. Um, I have ordered some nettle, some sage, and some calendula. So when we get those, we'll put those in jars. That'll be fun. These lavender flowers I got from Natural Grocers for like super cheap. Any herbs that I can get uh, from there, I'm gonna get from there because it's just so inexpensive to buy them in, the, in their bulk herb section. But unfortunately, they've been out of sage the last two times I went. So I just ordered some from Mountain Rose Herbs and it'll be here in a month. <laughs> So for the dishes that I use, the pan, um, anything that has soap on it, before you put this in the dishwasher, you just want to really, if you do put it in the dishwasher, you just want to really make sure you get all that soap off because you don't want that to like suds up in your dishwasher and cause your dishwasher to start like overflowing with soap suds. I don't know if that would really happen, but I'm not taking the chance, okay? I try to make sure I get all the soap residue off before I put anything in the dishwasher. Right now I'm just working on my wooden spoon and then I'm gonna try and wash out this pan the best I can. Get most, at least most of the soap out of it. But if you soak it in hot water like right after you finish making soap, it all comes out really pretty easily. Okay, it's been like four hours and it's time to check on the soap. I think it's done and we're just gonna test it and find out. So in order to test it, I'm just gonna sort of like feel the bottom and make sure it feels hard and then just sort of start to pop it out and I can see that it's definitely a solid block. So they're ready to pop out. Let's take one out and see how she looks. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at the color. I think this is one of the prettiest bars of soap I've ever made. I gotta say, I was a little unsure about the mica powder, but oh my God. It turned out so shimmery and beautiful. I hope that the camera is doing this justice because it is gorgeous. Oh, and it smells so good like lavender. So I definitely used enough scent. And the lavender flowers are kind of distributed throughout, at least in this block. So I'm really happy. Okay, I'm gonna pop the rest of them out and stack them on something so we can see how pretty they are. I'm just gonna put them on this plate. So this is why I like a silicone mold because it's just so easy to uh, pop the soap out. I've had plastic molds before and they're much harder and they break easier. So silicone molds are really nice. Look how easy that just comes right out. These are beautiful. I mean, they are so pretty. I am in love with this. Okay, gonna pop out the other two. I'm gonna put these lavender flowers back in the jar so we can save those for another project. Here's another gorgeous block. The shimmer of this mica powder in the clear soap is just incredible. I don't know how it's gonna look in a white soap base, so we're gonna have to try that out. Because in general with your soap color, clear is gonna make a more vibrant color. And if you add color to a white soap base, it's gonna be more like pastel in color because you're mixing it with white. Okay, this is weird. I don't know what happened to this bar. <laughs> There's like some dry lavender on top, but that's okay. They don't all have to be perfect because these are just for me to use. It's not like I'm selling these or anything, so I don't mind if there are a few flaws. Okay, y'all, look at these beautiful bars of soap, okay? They're gorgeous! I am so happy with how these turned out. They turned out way better than I even imagined and I cannot wait to use these in the shower. They smell so good. I love lavender. I know not everybody does, but it's my favorite scent. So I've got enough soap here to last me for like three or four months probably. I don't know. It's gonna last me a while because I will be the only one using this probably. And, uh, but I also use it to shave my legs. I will not use it on my face um, because I like to make a special facial cleanser that's a little bit more gentle. But I'll definitely use this on my body and to shave with. So 
yeah, it should last me quite a bit. Now I'm gonna make another batch as soon as Andrew runs out of his body wash that I got him for Christmas and I'm gonna make a batch for him and I'll probably use the goat milk soap for him and we're gonna make him like I said earlier like he really likes the orange and like fur scent so I'm gonna make him something like that maybe put a little rosemary uh, in there calendula flowers I don't know we'll figure out something really nice for him we'll make a nice new combination so I hope you guys liked this video this was a really fun project for me to do and I've got a lot more stuff like this planned for coming vlogs as soon as I slowly get the ingredients that I need to make new things I hope you learned something if you didn't I hope you at least found it a little bit entertaining that's all I can hope for and like I said I will be posting um, some instructions and like charts and things on my website in the coming days so check there lifepluscindy.com and thank you guys so much for watching I truly appreciate it I hope you're having a wonderful week and I hope you have a great night and I will see you with another vlog very soon bye